Hello and welcome to Your Hometown Solutions. I'm your host, Jean Newell with Waterview Realty. I'm always pleased and uh, happy to have all the experts that we invite to the studios because we discuss everything you need to know about your family, your family finances, your home, your garden, your garage, your kids. I don't care what it is. We talk about it here on Your Hometown Solutions. And just to give a little plug about our website, because a lot of people miss some of the shows or they have questions, you can always go to our home, our uh, website at yourhometownsolutions.com. There we have videos. We have a lot of the guests that uh, have their information there uh, that you can click on and contact them directly. We also have uh, Extra Equity Magazine that is for your um, reading pleasure, and you can request that and we mail it out. It's about 54 pages that discusses all kinds of things that you need to know about real estate, whether you're buying, selling, moving, it doesn't matter. It's got something in there that I know you'll find in, uh, great information. And so today we've been, last week we were talking with Colleen Quick about financial planning. Um, today we're going to be talking about senior issues and that is so important because, again, we have a segment we sometimes refer to when we're talking about real estate, and it's called, Should I Stay or Should I Go? And that always is a, a situation that I see happening when I'm in real estate, and people, they invite me out to their home, and they're thinking about selling, but they're not too sure. And what they really need is someone to bounce some ideas off of. And here's usually the scenario. It, it always happens around the Thanksgiving table or around a, a holiday table when the kids and everybody get together. And all of a sudden, the issue comes up about mom and dad or maybe just mom and what's happening um, in their current lifestyle and their current home. So the one scenario is the the elder parents, the seniors, uh, the senior parents, they say to the children, you know, Kids, the adult kids now, kids, um, we're thinking about maybe scaling down, selling our home. We just don't feel like we need to have all this, you know, this this big yard to take care of and all the maintenance and so forth. And the kids have a fit. They don't want mom and dad to leave. They want mom and dad to stay in that house because they don't want to see their room you know, they want to keep their room in some kind of a preserved from the 1970s when they were in school. They want to have that home site, that homestead that they're used to growing up in and being there on holidays. They don't want their parents to leave. So you have that scenario where they don't, the, the whole family's not behind the parents. And then the flip side of that is the kids. Every time they visit mom and dad's house, they start seeing there's more and more things going wrong. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. They don't want to hear that dad who's 70 years old is climbing on the roof again to do something. And they're trying, they're holding their breath trying to keep mom and dad safe in their current house. And they're, they're trying to get them to look at various options that they have available and the different living styles. But mom and dad got their heels, um, you know, key in there to the ground and they don't want to budge. So you always have some conflict sometimes in the families on should I stay, should I go, and we always say um, we have kind of like a service, it's a free service, we, we like to have somebody let, let them feel like they can bounce some ideas off of us, because sometimes it's not important for them to sell their home, maybe they need to keep their home available to them and rent it so they can afford to go somewhere else and use that rental money into an assisted living. So there's a lot of things. You don't always have to sell your home um, on a situation like that. But we want people to know that there's alternative living, there's different styles, there's different things. And of course, the first thing that comes to mind is 55 plus. A lot of people know that as a senior living where you buy another home, maybe the yard work is taken care of for you, the roofing, the painting of the outside, and, and at least you still have a house, but you don't have a lot of upkeep. So that might work good for some people. And again, depending on your situation, once I think the physicality starts to decline a little bit, then I think it's more important to start looking at assisted types of living. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about various 
care for seniors. And with so many senior housing options available, it's easy to feel confused and overwhelmed by the vast number of care types and styles of senior living communities. It's important to learn the terminology and the differences between senior care solutions that are out there because you have to make the right choice for yourself or your family. So I'm happy to have in the studios with me today Michelle, not Michelle, but Michelle, like the Beatles song, Michelle Taylor, and uh, with us today from the Fountains of Melbourne Senior Living. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. You got your name, you said, from your father because he liked that Beatles song. The one and only song he actually liked and listened to. <laughs> That's right, because I, I like the way you spell it the, with the M E C H E L L E, Taylor. Now, let's talk about. A little bit about your background. You're the sales director at the Fountains, but let's talk in general about the various types of of senior living because everyone has mishmashed it all together and they call it assisted living when sometimes it's not really assisted living they're after. They're after something else, but they don't know the terminology. Let's talk about independent living communities. Let's start there. Okay. Um, independent living is really for those people who are just that. They're still independent. They're still doing for themselves. They're still living their life. However, they don't want to deal with the stress of upkeep anymore. Maybe they're no longer able to drive eyesight issues. Maybe they just don't feel like cooking anymore or dealing with the cleaning of the day to day. So independent living allows them to live a stress free lifestyle. They are able to live on their own terms. Most independent livings are a month-to-month rental. There are some that are going to be a year-long lease, but um, it gives them the freedom to live on their terms, make choices for themselves, decorate an apartment the way they want to, make it their home. Mm -hmm. I know some people will call that maybe a retirement village or sometimes even 55-plus communities, senior apartments or uh, continuing care retirement communities. They have all kinds of names for that, but somewhere that it's an apartment, but it's per- perhaps they've got a, um, a the libraries, they've got the cafeteria or the restaurant um, where they can go down and get their meals. Some of them provide meals every day. Some of them are, you can make your choice and different things like that, right? So it's every it's, community is different. going to have its own level of service and amenities. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to explain to people that senior living, especially here in Brevard County, is very much like the fruit basket on your table. Right. You have apples and oranges and pears and bananas. They're all called fruit, but they all have a different flavor, a different smell, Mm -hmm. a different texture. So finding the right community for the right feel for you is what's most important. So the fountains, tell us where that's located in Greater Palm Bay. We're actually in Melbourne. Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're on Stack Boulevard, 4451 Stack Boulevard. Um, Just north of Palm Bay Road. It is north of Palm Bay Road, Mm -hmm. yes, off of exit 176 of 95. So you're actually an independent living community, but you also have assisted living there as well. That's one of the nicest features about the community. We offer full apartment homes to all of our residents. Uh, People can move in with the knowledge that as their needs change, as time goes on, If they need more support, they don't just need the meals and the housekeeping, the transportation anymore. Now maybe they need someone to help them with their medications or they're not as stable getting in and out of the shower. Mm -hmm. Now they can make that transition into a like-sized apartment home in assisted living, have help available to them 24 hours a day, and provide them the safety and the security and yet still maintain their independence to live their life on their terms. I know I had a friend that lived there at the Fountains and we visited her often and it, it was a beautiful apartment. It was uh, like a two-bedroom, mm-hmm. two-bath, had a balcony that overlooked a little lake, I believe. Yes. And she had a car, but sometimes uh, you, you had you have regular transportation, like a little minibus there. And sometimes she just used the minibus to go shopping and so and forth. Sometimes so, it's nicer on a rainy mm-hmm. day or uh, when you're not feeling as perky yeah. to be able to use the bus. We have it scheduled seven days a week to take them out to all their travel needs. And you don't you make a certain run to the doctor's offices um, daily as well? We go multiple times every day. Mm-hmm. They can run any time between 8.30 and 2 is the last drop-off. We pick them up by 4, mm-hmm. Monday through Friday. 
so they don't have to live on a specific day. They can just make their appointments as they need to. Oh, that's great. Because I know they also have planned activities, and they take them different places. They'll go to a theater and bureau or something. I don't know. You have all kinds of events that come up. We have a wellness program that is six dimensions, physical, emotional, spiritual, social, intellectual, and vocational wellness. So all of our activities fall into various categories, from Bible study to uh theater trips to playing cards to a lecture about the civil war it could be any variety of of topics or or activities going on fitness classes got to keep the mind body and spirit all moving and active i know when i got there the first time i was i was kind of surprised because it didn't look like you know from when i was a kid and we used to go to nursing homes and we would be there to um, perform. Um, we had a little kids show, and we would perform for them and so forth. And that was kind of all that I ever knew about seniors was nursing homes. And there weren't the pleasant of places back years ago. And when you go into some of these new um, assisted livings as well as independent living uh, communities, they're like going into a little um, a a resort. resort. Exactly. They have pools. They have um, you know, all kinds of facilities, and it's just like you're walking around. They even have beauty, beauty little beauty shop and um, all those different things. Kind of there. a mini city within the city. Exactly. Uh, providing all of those services and, and amenities out to the residents to allow those that maybe can't get out as often to still have the niceties of day-to-day life. So we've we've talked about assisted living. Now, the next step from assisted living, I know you don't have this at the fountains, but we're just going to be generally talking about senior living, would be the next step would probably be nursing home, where they would go to, to get full-time care and so forth. So that would probably be the next step from assisted living. Assisted living, there's, there's several levels of assisted living. Um, different licensures allow different levels of care. Okay. Um, but... Getting to a skilled nursing facility is generally someone who needs 24-hour medical monitoring, someone who is maybe not able to get out of bed at all, maybe needs feeding tubes or um, constant oversight by a doctor so that their health is able to be maintained. They're no longer safe to live in that resort setting. Mm Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people have to recover from an operation at a nursing home on a temporary basis as well. So a nursing home isn't always just... They can also be a rehab center. Mm -hmm. So after a surgery to go and regain strength or to relearn how to walk or um, dress yourself or do those things that maybe you didn't have the strength after the surgery to do. Exactly. To relearn. Relearn. Um, then I, I was, I was kind of perusing some of the information online. Uh, the next step may, maybe would be an Alzheimer's care unit where that would be a little bit more intense than at nursing home because you have to make sure that you have sight of that person all the time. A memory care is going to be a locked unit, meaning that someone cannot wander away because not all people who need memory care are physically impaired. Mm-hmm. They just don't know what's safe and what's not. So they need to be in a less open area. Uh, Maybe they get anxious easily, so it needs to be a little quieter, a little more uh, controlled. Mm -hmm. Not everyone who develops Alzheimer's or dementia is going to need a locked unit. Some people can continue to live out their lives through assisted living with the supportive care and reminders and cueing. But when needed, a locked unit is um, a memory care is, is a good place to be. In that particular case, and I'm bringing up something now that um, kind of off the top of my head, but sometimes you have a couple who want to need to move in together. They, uh, it's a married couple, let's say, and they, they start off as assisted living, or let's just say they first start off as independent living, and one becomes uh, uh, more of a candidate for the assisted side. Do you can you move the whole couple over to assisted, or is it just the one partner? At the fountains, we are able to transition them together. They move from an apartment into another apartment in the assisted living area. And that's just for us to be able to go door to door. Mm -hmm. Everyone has the same amenities and services, and it's not separated in any way. Um, But they live together. One can be independent, and one receive the services that they need to maintain their health and well-being. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do they, and I'm just curious on this, on the assisted living side, is there 
some kind of a monitor so that every morning uh, you check them? Do they have to? Do they answer the phone or do they buzz in with a? Actually, in <laughs> independent living, we have a daily check-in button. Okay, um, and we do check on those once a day that have not contacted us or we haven't seen in the course of the morning. Um, in assisted living, because the nurses and the CNAs are continuing to move in and out of the apartments. Uh, to deliver medications or help with showering or getting in and out of bed or just good mornings Mm -hmm. uh, that we know what's going on as far as that goes. But they do have an emergency pendant if something happens in between those visits. I imagine in the very near future, these emergency pendants will actually be more like a Bluetooth and you'll be able to monitor them the entire time. You won't, you know, you'll know (laughs) <laughs> where they're at in the apartment and uh, what they're doing. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's right around the corner. We're all going to be monitored. <laughs> uh, so you've been listening to Michelle Taylor, um, a senior lifestyle uh, expert from the Fountains of Melbourne. And we're here to discuss a lot of the different choices out there for seniors. Because again, you you may be in a situation, and it's not always 65 or 70-year-olds. Sometimes you might even get someone that's younger than that that need to have uh, independent living community. Is that right? You don't have to be over a certain age. Uh, usually, as, as independent is going to be a 62 and up for independent living. Uh, by law, assisted living can't have a age requirement because it is a medical need. Um, but again, you want to find the right fit for a person. Um Independent living just does generally average about 86 years old when they're coming into us. Wow. So people are staying at home longer. We're encouraging them to come out and explore and educate themselves to see what their options could be. Because a lot of people, as you said, you remember the old nursing home. Mm-hmm. Many people have that vision mm-hmm. of what senior living is and they don't want anything to do with it. Then they walk through the front door right. and they're amazed at what life could be. They never envisioned it to be that luxury lifestyle, that Mm -hmm. freedom to enjoy life, follow their passions and be involved in the things that maybe they didn't have the energy for anymore. They used to love to paint and they used to love to play cards or they love to travel, but just dealing with the house and the upkeep and the grocery shopping and the cooking takes all the energy all day long. Mm -hmm. So they've given up the fun and they just focus on getting through the day. Our goal is to give that back to them and let them enjoy life again. Well, I know when I visited there, we actually would have uh, lunch. Sometimes we'd have dinner. And it was nice they could invite. Mm -hmm. So many times a month you could invite someone uh, to come join you for dinner or so forth. And you could even, I think you could even reserve the room, um, the uh, restaurant part of the what what would you call it the dining and the we, dining area for parties or receptions and so forth or can you oh, you have other rooms as well as you could do that we have three unique dining rooms um, an all day dining program seven a m to seven p m over thirty entree selections daily mm-hmm. but residents are able to bring guests anytime they mm-hmm. want um, we do ask that they make reservations for parties over six just because that way we can have tables available to mm-hmm. them. But, anytime... but they serve you just like a restaurant. They yes. come. You have a nice, you have a nice uh, waiter or a waitress, and and they had, if I remember correctly, like a buffet for salad. I mean, it was really quite nice. The other time that I went to the fountains, I've been there several times, uh, as I had a, a special needs dog. It was called a um, Space Coast Therapy Dog oh. Community, and my dog was. Um, being trained to be one of the special needs dogs. And what they did is they formed this group and you went to every Saturday, you had to go two or three different places. It was either hospitals or assisted living or independent living or schools or various things. And the dogs were there because a lot of people miss, miss their pets. And, and, um, you know, they, they like the, you know, have the, see the dogs or the cats and so forth. You still have those visitations from the we therapy do. dogs? Um, some people don't feel that they're still able to keep up with the mm-hmm. care of an animal. So they very much enjoy having the therapy animals come in. We do a share your pet day. Um, but we are also a pet friendly community. So if someone does have a small dog or a cat or a bird and they don't want to part with that, it's a part of the family. We love our animals. That's right. I so forgot about that. Go you ahead do and bring that. them with them and, uh, maintain that life only now we can spend more time enjoying it i know you see this on the news every once in a while when they're talking about lowering your blood pressure or your heart rate and so forth that 
people that pet animals, not only does their heart rate slow down and they relax, but so does the pets. Yes. And that, that was just on uh, Good Morning America a couple days ago about how the, the, the pets like it as well and long strokes for the pets and almost like hypnotizing them. So there's a, there's a health benefit there as well. So if someone was just curious of what you had to offer, can, should they call and make an appointment to come see you? Can they just stop in? or How would you like to see that? Um, I do prefer to work by appointment because I want to be available to my guests when they arrive. Mm -hmm. If I'm with someone else and they walk in, they may have to wait. Um, But if that's all they can do is walk in, we will definitely try to accommodate them. Uh, But they can call me at 321-984-1494. Ask for me, Shell, and I'll be happy to talk with them. They can also go to our website at lifeatthefountains.com and... And look at floor plans, see our calendar and menus and oh, things right. like There's that. that's right. There's floor plans on there because you have like studios, you have We have about 13 different floor plans. Wow. So finding the right size that's going to fit your lifestyle. And I know we, we probably can't get into all kinds of pricing and so forth today, but in general, what do you see, let's start with uh, assisted living on a whole. I saw, I just pulled some figures up off the web, um, the general websites of Anywhere from about twenty eight to forty five hundred dollars a month would that seem like it fits into the generalities of Brevard County? Um, it depends there because there's so many different options depending um, on the size. Depending of your on apartment. the size, mm-hmm. the community. Um, there are some that are supple- uh, supplemented with Medicaid, and those will start at around the twenty two mark, mm-hmm. and others go clear up to six and seven thousand dollars a month, just based on care needs right. and how much support. Uh, community is providing to that specific resident. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Medicaid because, again, a lot of people, they get to retirement age or they have a situation and they have to, uh, one or both parties need to go into an independent living community or an assisted living and they don't have money set aside for that. Maybe they've lost it all or something has happened or they don't have long ter- long care insurance. And I'm not even sure long care insurance would even Fall Long-term into care does, impa- does in Long fact pay care. for mm-hmm. uh, assisted living. It does not pay for independent living, but it will pay based on the policy. And every policy yes, is different, different, has different criteria that must be met by the community as well as the person wanting to use the policy. Um, so in general, long-term care pays for assisted living, um, memory care, nursing home care, things like that. So Medic- for the person who, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, Medicaid will only pay for assisted living and skilled nursing for those that qualify financially with the program. Um, I'm definitely not the expert mm-hmm. on Medicaid. I am, our community is a private pay, so we don't work with that. So, well, next week, <laughs> a little plug for next week, we have Alec Prentice and he's a elder care attorney and he's going to be talking about uh, different plans that are available and so forth for that. So that's another show that you want to tune into. We we really were focusing on um, senior care and so forth this month. Uh, let's talk about the next set. We talked about Alzheimer's care, but then there's residential care homes. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about what that means? Residential care homes are generally an individual house or grouping of houses that have rooms for a Anywhere from three to six people. They have an individual bedroom that they do um, make their own furnish. Mm -hmm. Uh, But they share a common space of living room, dining room. There is someone there 24 hours a day to do the cooking and help the cleaning as well as the care needs that that person has. So those might be a less expensive option, but they're going to have to share some more space Mm -hmm. than they would in one of the other options. Right. So it's more of a, a, a house, not necessarily a standard house that we're thinking of, but a, a home that might have It is generally bedrooms. a converted house, uh-huh. and uh, then, a normal And they share the kitchen home, and so forth. And a multitude of bedrooms, depending mm-hmm. on how it was built. Mm-hmm. And kind of like a frat house. Kind of, <laughs> yes. Frat house for seniors, okay. <laughs> um, then there is, uh, is that respite? Respite care? Respite care. Respite care. Respite care is generally a very short-term stay in a community. It could be anywhere from three days to 30 days. Um, And that is where someone normally lives with a family member 
or is in town for a short period of time and needs more support than they can get from their family. So, or maybe the family, the caregiver needs to take a break, go right. on vacation or has to take a trip. So they're, they're placed in communities that have space available, pre-furnished mm-hmm. for a, a number of days to receive the care and support. So it's like a temporary need. stay. It is. Uh, while the, the, your caregiver um, uh, t- has to leave, maybe go on a vacation and they do need a break. And that's one of the things that if you're a 24 hour caregiver, bless your heart, because that is a more than a full-time job and you sometimes just need to get away and will they take them on a one day or do you have to be there for every seven? community it's has different. a different um structure to mm-hmm. how their respite works uh usually it's a week um sometimes it's as little as three days mm-hmm. uh for us we can you know when we do have the availability and we do something like that it's up to 29 days and usually it's a daily rate that they pay yes. Well, that. I was seeing here, and again, these rates might change depending on the community, but it says anywhere from 75 to $200 a day, something And that's like that. going to be based on how much care, but yes, that's mm-hmm. appropriate. Then you have home care, and that's basically what we're talking about right now, where maybe the elder parent is staying with the children. Is that what we would consider home care? Home care is actually, you'll see home health agencies all over Brevard County, um, and those are agencies that allow caregivers they could be just a companion they could be a cna which is a certified nursing assistant or even some nurses that go into a person's home and provide support there it is not necessarily that they're living with someone else they're living in their own home and they are having someone come in and provide the care that they would receive in an assisted living within the the home Mm -hmm. Um, so for some people that is a great option it, the only thing that they're going to lack in that situation would be maybe a social outlet. I know when I was taking care of my mother, I had a full-time job. So when I went to my job, we had a home care giver stay with my mother and make sure, you know, because you know what happens. They they want to be so independent and they, they don't like to be, sit, they don't want anybody helping them because right. that's the one thing that a lot of seniors think, as soon as my car is taken away from me or as soon as I have to abandon my home and as soon as I have to ask for help, then I feel like um, I'm less of a person or something. I, they, they don't like to give up that independence. Correct. So if, if you don't have somebody watching them or being there with them, they're getting out of the bed by themselves and doing a lot of things they're not supposed to do. And then, bingo, there's a, another accident on the floor. So home care is, is, is very important for the person that is keep taking care of their parents or, or even sometimes a disabled children or something like that, that be able to have that outsource, to have that person coming in that can relieve them of some of those duties during the day. So all of these are various different things that are possible. But again, we always stress here on Your Hometown Solutions that it's all about getting the expert's advice. You want to know what's available before you have to make that decision. So before you're faced with putting the parents into a, another community or having them leave their home or whatever, sit down and look at the whole scheme of things, the whole um, picture, because perhaps you're not ready today, but maybe six months from now you will be, and it'll make your life a lot easier if you already have some ideas on figures and facts and so forth, because it's all about making the right choices. And again, we want to thank Michelle Taylor, and with the Fountains of Melbourne Senior Living, she's the sales director there. Give out your information one more time. You can reach me at 321-984-1494. Education is the key, and I'll be happy to help you. Uh, you can also go to our website at lifeatthefountains.com. How many apartments are at the Fountains right we now? We have 265 apartments. Okay, and residents? About 300 people live there. So it's a nice, diverse community, but yet at the same time small enough to make it feel like family. Well, and another thing, uh, we just have a couple seconds left, but uh, one of the things I noticed when I used to visit there, you were allowed to have a wreath or something on your own front doors. People had little flower arrangements. They had their own welcome mats. So it had some personalization to even your front door. 
You can personalize the front door. You're going to make that apartment home. Yes. Your space. Exactly. You bring your precious treasures with you. Exactly. You don't have to give it all up. It's wonderful. Thank you again, Michelle Taylor, for joining us today. I'm Jean Newell with Waterview Realty. We interview experts on all kinds of diverse information. Again, if you want more information on past shows, on what we have coming up, um, even about what we've talked about today, go to our website at yourhometownsolutions.com and ask for our book, The Extra Equity, which tells you everything you need to know about real estate and anything else you want to know. <laughs> so thank you all for listening, and we'll check you out next week.